Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah kita dapat berjumpa pada malam ini. <coughs> ini uh, kelas yang kedua, eh? kuliah yang kedua. Uh, jadi sebagaimana yang telah disebut dalam kuliah yang pertama, uh, this uh, course is designed uh, to help students Uh, mainly to be able to understand the research, uh, the 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 research method, the theories, uh, epistemology related to the uh, research method, uh, the terms related to research method, and more importantly, to be able to <clears throat> apply what we learn from the class to write your PhD thesis. So at the end of the course, uh, I expect everyone to write, to be able to write chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, inshallah. Uh, so don't worry about passing the class. Eh? You will get pass or fail. No A, no B, no Cs. Just pass or fail. And uh, since I've been teaching this class, nobody has failed. So, <laughs> so inshallah, everybody will, will pass. Um, to me, passing is just a formality. But more importantly, what we can learn from this class uh, and, and transfer that knowledge, apply that knowledge into writing our uh, PhD thesis. Yeah? So I expect uh, lots of questions, yeah? So this class will be a success if um, you ask me lots of questions. And you will not learn uh, much if you let me uh, speak. <laughs> if, if there is a one-way <coughs> uh, one traffic, yeah? Um, and you just sit and and listen, uh, I think uh, you, will, you will not learn much. So you will learn more by asking lots of questions. So you are encouraged to ask any questions. Okay, let's, let's go back to assignment one. Yeah? So uh, I believe all of you have written the initial plan and uh, submitted to me and alhamdulillah i have accepted let me read again those who have uh, submitted uh, saya dengar lecture dari full oh, okay Uh, so all of you have submitted and the purpose of um, submitting the initial proposal is just to determine your supervisor, right? And then uh, from that initial plan, you can still improve a little bit, okay? You can still improve uh, the initial plan that you submitted to me. And I give you this rubric, yeah? This is how, how I mark your course assignment. Uh, number one, I will look into the research, uh, uh, the research uh, purpose. <clears throat> uh, so, so if you, If all the research questions and objectives are clear and aligned with the stated problem, first you, you have to write your problem statement, right? Um, and then uh, the research questions and re research objectives are clear and aligned with the problem statement, you get four marks. Uh, but don't, don't worry about the marks, everybody will pass. But you, you try to follow rubric number four, eh? Try to follow rubric number four. 
and then establishing the significance of the study. Uh, all the significance of study is clearly stated. And then uh, research uh, organization and structure. And then literature review. For this literature review, for the um, initial proposal, um, you don't need much, okay? Maybe between five to 10 uh, literatures or articles that you have uh, written. And today we will talk about how to write literature review. But for initial plan, uh, you don't need to read uh, too much. But if you read, uh, the more is the better. Yeah? But if you can read about uh, 10 for now, it's all right for the initial proposal. And like we discussed last time, all the literature must uh, relate to the topic. Yeah? <laughs> and research method, uh, we will discuss briefly uh how to do the research method most more importantly whether you want to use um uh qualitative or quantitative uh, research so it's up to you which one is more comfortable for you whether the research method and research design is quanti or quali uh, depends on the objectives of the research and also the uh, research questions. Okay, that's the first assignment. Okay, I'm sure you have um, submitted, but please uh, improve again by looking at this, uh, at this um, rubric, yeah? And then send to me uh, next week. Send to me next week, inshallah. So next week, I will start um, uh, marking your first assign assignment. Yeah? So please uh, improve whatever that you have sent and look at this rubric. Uh, look at number four. Yeah? And uh, inshallah, you will get high marks. So for the first assignment is 20 marks. Yeah? Full marks is 20. Okay, so if possible, uh, next week, I would like everyone to make a PowerPoint after you finish improving your uh, initial proposal. Yeah? Next week, uh, I would like you to present, maybe in 10 minutes, make like a 10 slides, and everyone uh, will present uh, in about 10 minutes so that uh, everybody can see uh, what others have done and we can help each other. Yeah, maybe I can give comments. Maybe uh, Dr. Saifu can also give comment. Papa Fakri also can give comments. Everybody can give comments. Yeah? We are just trying to help each other. Okay, so next week is a presentation day. Yeah? for the uh, third class. Okay, any any question? So just, just try your best, don't worry. If you are ready or not ready, just present whatever that uh, you have, yeah? Don't worry. Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> yes, please. Uh, actually, the methodology is not what I read uh, right before when I'm sending to you. I, I want to change actually. Sure. Uh, that in that uh, paper I was sending the proposal I was sending by qualitative. At this time, I want to choose the quantitative. So for the is uh, for the assignment. Because I don't know yet which uh, uh, method I will use. Uh, I'm still confused. So in this assignment for the uh, first assignment, what I should 
uh, right in the methodology. Okay, insyaAllah we will discuss. InsyaAllah. Good question. Uh, insyaAllah, Bapa Adi, we will discuss about uh, what to write in the uh, methodology. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Good question. So the question is, uh, Bapa Adi would like to change from qualitative to quantitative. Yeah? From quality to quantity. Uh, Insha'Allah, we will discuss uh, how to write uh, quantitative methods for uh, how to write a research method for quantitative research. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Any other question? So, like I said, uh, if possible, uh, next week, yeah, on on Saturday, on Saturday before the class, you submitted to me your initial proposal that has been improved yes please improve eh? I expect some improvement like i said before the one that you submitted was just for the purpose of uh, choosing who will be your supervisor okay it will not be marked yet yeah what will be marked is the improvement uh, from the uh, initial proposal that you sent. So this Saturday, you can send to WhatsApp first because some of you have not uh, been, uh, have not registered officially as uh, the student because some of you might be waiting for VAL and something like that. Uh, because I'm I'm not a very knowledgeable about um, this process eh, of uh, <coughs> VAL and uh, those things. I'm um, more into the academic side. Eh? Once you register, then I know what to do. If you haven't registered, uh, I I'm not uh, very helpful. So, and uh, anybody who have uh, officially registered, can you raise your hand? Yes, I think all, all of our brands is already registered. Yeah, we, we paid the, the uh, file uh, uh, fee for, uh, yeah, we already paid the, the file and uh, submitted the, the form. Yeah, and now we are, we are waiting. And uh, actually today I have a message from Mr. Farhudin, yeah? Brother Farhudin, that uh, telling my call declaration is wrong. So I have to uh, revise again. Uh, Prof, I have a question, Prof. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said that we we will have a supervisor after uh, Wednesday. Yes. Uh, how how fast we can uh, direct communication to our supervisor after the 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 person is is being uh, chosen by the 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 supervisor, and is it possible that uh, the the, how to say it? the the proposal that we submitted to you will be revised by our new supervisor. Yes, uh, it, it's possible. So how fast uh, can you contact? Uh, usually, uh, after officially registered. Uh, uh, your name will appear in the list of uh, registered students uh, okay. in the portal that we can see. So your supervisor will contact you after they see your names. Uh, so after you officially registered, what happens is your name will be put under uh, your supervisor's name it will appear uh, in our system. So the supervisors will contact. But if uh, I'm your supervisor, you can uh, 
contact me uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, okay. I don't have to wait for your name because I already know you. But for some other supervisors, they might not know you. So they will look up uh, in their portal. And then your name will appear and your phone number also will appear. Usually they will contact you as soon as possible. And what was the second question? I forgot. Oh, yeah. You already answered, I think. Uh, uh, the possibility of uh, changing our proposal after submitting to you. Usually, uh, usually what happens is the supervisors don't change your topic. Uh, what they will do is they will comment and try to improve uh, and uh, make sure that uh, everything is aligned. For example, um, how you state your research question, how you state your research objective uh, must be aligned with literature review, must be aligned with the research methodology. Usually they don't change your topic. Uh, yeah, sorry for being a little bit personal. Uh, for my case, actually, the the proposal I submit, the proposal I submitted to you is uh, uh, my uh, my research granted by ministry. So uh, in this year, actually, I have to uh, publish the article. So is it possible to have a quick review by you, by uh, by Prof Yusuf? Then I can submit it as soon as possible to the article to the uh, journal. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I will um, I will check uh, after class or tomorrow. So I will look at the latest proposal that you sent. Eh? Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. Thank uh, you, bro. I will make a comment, inshallah. Or if we have time, um, you know, towards the end of the class, we can also take a look at that if you have time. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Salam. You're welcome. So the the uh, proposal uh, will be submitted, and uh, it has not been approved yet, right? Yeah, I uh, try to submit it to one journal in Indonesia, Q2, uh, Scopus, but it is uh, declined uh, for some reason, and uh, I uh, extend. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I try to find another uh, better journal after I have uh, a co comment from you. Uh, the proposal is not in the format of an article yet, uh, right? Yeah, uh, I uh, uh, revised the, the 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 article the. Uh, actually, it's already finished, uh, but I revised the form uh, following the, the template from uh, Unisham. Okay, so the latest uh, proposal uh, follows the Unisham format. Yeah. Right? Okay. yeah. And then we need to convert from the initial pro proposal into the format of article. Yeah. Yeah, it's already uh, 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 prepared following the article format, actually. OK. Uh, you, can, so you, can, you can also send me the ones in the article format. OK, bro. <clears throat> Okay, any other question? Assalamualaikum, Prof. Assalamualaikum. I want to try to uh, the question about literature review. Is, uh, is there the limitation about uh, years? Uh, because uh, we have uh, we have a student in Indonesia, uh, there are debatable about a limitation of year the literature review, 
actually uh, most of all there are five years uh, the new of five years uh, it is uh, actually in our class or in our uh, thesis thank you bro very good question uh, there is uh, no magic number as uh, what uh, what should be the composition of the latest article? Uh, there's no magic number. Uh, the latest uh, research or the latest article is defined by five years or newer. Five years or newer. Now it's 2022. Means 2018, right? 2018 or, or more recent. Um, so what is the percentage of the recent compared to the uh, not so recent? There are no magic numbers. Some say 30% must be recent articles. Some say 20%. So there is no magic number. To me, as long as there are some combinations of recent articles and also the old articles, it is it is fine because it's kind of difficult to determine, you know, how uh, how many should be the recent articles. Uh, it is uh, subjective because. In some uh, topics, there are lots and lots of recent articles, recent articles. But right. in some topics, it, it is very difficult to find the recent articles. So at least, you know, there are some combinations. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Hi. Salam, bro. <laughs> so that's, that's your. Uh, eldest? Uh, my youngest son. Oh, your youngest? Yeah. <laughs> his name uh. is Ismail. <laughs> again, again, what's his name? My name is Mahir. 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 Yeah. A oh, very good name. So <laughs> you are a child and you have Mahir already. <laughs> your name is Mahir. <laughs> he loves Philippines so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mahir means expert in Bahasa, in Bahasa Malaysia. Okay. Means expert. <laughs> yeah, terima kasih, bro. <laughs> yeah, mudah-mudahan he will be an expert. Amen, amen. <laughs> Okay, so for so for now, try to find a combinations of recent articles uh, besides the old articles. Yeah, as long as there are some combinations. Um, so, uh, what is the composition of recent articles is kind of subjective. The more, the better. The more recent articles, the better. Yeah? And in some universities, they require you to find articles in the certain rankings. Yeah, they want uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, uh, Scopus, Wars. But at Unisham's, uh, we do not place any emphasis on that. As long as it is published, then it is uh, it can be used as a reference. Yeah. So we are not uh, strict on that one. So you can find uh, any articles. Uh, but if you can find, you know, in Q2 or Q3, it's better. Otherwise, don't worry. As long as it is published. Include uh, our article uh, bef uh, 
before uh, the thesis our uh, our subject thesis sure. there are have uh, published in uh, much art, art much uh, journal sure. or uh, proceeding yes sure uh, i also published um, i also made reference to my own articles from when i was doing my phd so i cite myself so it is all right if you have articles in the area you can also cite yourself yeah i made a citation to myself also when i was uh, writing the phd thesis and please uh, cite my articles yeah uh, you can find my articles in google scholar just type my name type my name correctly but I, I have follow your Google Scholar Pro. No, oh, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Inshallah, you will find some of the relevant articles, Inshallah. Okay. Now let's try to discuss the uh, how to write um research method in quantitative studies. So, <clears throat> Maybe I will share my thesis. Uh, my thesis is not uh, very good, but uh, I passed. <laughs> so, so it's all right. Eh? <laughs> so my research is a quantitative one. <clears throat> so let's look at how we write the um, uh, research methodology chapter. Usually, research methodology is chapter three, right? But in my case, I write as chapter four because uh, that was uh, the recommendation by the examiner during the viva so they asked me to add uh, a, an additional chapter so my chapter originally it was chapter one introduction uh, chapter two originally literature review but the they made me to write chapter two as concepts uh, and management of zakat. So literature review becomes chapter three. So it depends on the examiner, right? Because before this, my chapter one was too long. So they wanted to make it into two chapters. So chapter three should be research methodology, but in my case, it becomes chapter four, but it doesn't matter. You want to pass, so you do whatever your examiner asks you to do. All right, let, let's talk about uh, research methodology. Uh, in your chapter, in your uh, writing, it should be chapter three. So it depends on your supervisor, it depends on, on your examiner, right? So what do you write? First, you write introduction. Intro, introduction, something like this. Uh, so in um, writing the, the PhD thesis, usually we need to make an introduction of what the chapter is all about. For example, you can write, this chapter starts with Elaboration on uh, research design, followed by theoretical framework of the study. 
And then after that, after the theoretical framework, you we did we discuss the research hypothesis, uh, how we develop the research hypothesis, and after that uh, we discuss the measurement of variables. Because in the conceptual framework, you have many variables, or some people, uh, when it comes to measurement, they call constructs. Yeah? So this, when we have many variables, we have to measure. Variables are constructs, right? Means something uh, abstract. Yeah, something abstract. For example, attitude. It is something uh, a construct. Attitude is an a variable or a construct. Means it is um, it's an abstract thing. You cannot see attitude. You cannot see. You cannot touch. Yeah, is is in somebody's uh, mind. Yeah, the attitude. Right. You cannot see. You can see me, but you cannot see my attitude. Maybe I have good attitude, maybe I don't have good attitude. Okay, same as others. You see Dr. Saiful, uh, but you cannot touch his attitude, yeah? So <laughs> it's something abstract, yeah? So we talk about how to measure the variables. Yeah? Attitude, how do we measure? Uh, we talk about that. Uh, and then, after you specify and explain how to measure the variables, uh, we need to explain how we collect the data. For example, if you want to use a questionnaire, how are you going to collect the questionnaire? Right? How are you going to distribute the questionnaire first? Yeah, you need to distribute. And then after distribution, uh, you need to collect back the questionnaires. Usually, uh, you know, uh, usually the response rate is very low. So how do you do if the response rate is very low? Nowadays, um, it is an option to distribute questionnaires uh, in the form of Google Form where you can send to certain WhatsApp group, you know, related that um, you can find some um, respondent in it. For example, one of my PhD students um, choose uh, the population of the study as um, university students in the state of Kedah. So the population covers all university students are studying in the state of Qatar, right? So he uh, constructed the questionnaire, uh, including all the questionnaire items. And fortunately, he found a WhatsApp group yeah, of those students. Yeah? He was fortunate because he had friends and he found the WhatsApp group uh, and the uh, certain emails of the students and he distributed in the form of Google Form. And then data collection is easy. He did not have to meet personally with the respondents, right? The Google, the, they return in the form of Google Form, yeah? He collected in the Google form, just sitting at his house. He didn't have to go out. And then the Google form it can be transferred to Excel, right? He learned how to transform the Google form into Excel, so it, it becomes much easier. So after we collect the um, data, then we need to um we need to um, analyze yeah? so we we discuss data collection and we discuss how we organize the questionnaire and 
we need to determine unit of analysis and population and, and sampling, and then sample size, sample criteria. Then we go out um, to field work. Like I said, in the field work, uh, nowadays you have the option to send your questionnaires um, using e-surveys, yeah, e-surveys, including uh, WhatsApp, um, email, and other kinds of uh, methods. And data analysis, inshallah, we will cover that one. Uh, if you do um, quantitative methods, I would strongly recommend that you use uh, Smart PLS, uh, the second generation data statistical package. Uh, that is friendly and um, friendly and um, what's the word? Eh? Friendly in the sense that it can analyze even if uh, uh, even if the questionnaire items are limited. We will talk uh, in more detail about that one. And then uh, you want to also have the pilot study. Okay, so in chapter three, we talk about the measurement of variables how we collect the data, organization of questionnaire, unit of analysis, population and sampling, sample size, procedure, and fieldwork. We need to explain how we are going to uh, distribute and collect the questionnaire, how we are going to analyze. And also we need to do pilot tests. Pilot, the purpose of pilot tests is to test the reliability of the um, questionnaire items. So it's very important that the questionnaire items pass the reliability test. So that's for chapter three. And uh, for uh, proposal defense, you need to complete writing chapter one chapter two and chapter three. So hopefully by the end of this class, uh, all of you will be able to write chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, right? So this uh, semester, inshallah, you will uh, present first at the initial plan, okay? The date will be announced uh, later for your proposal defense. Inshallah, everybody will present at the colloquium one this semester. Okay. Uh, in it, colloquium one means you present the improved version of the initial plan that you sent, meaning your assignment one. That's all. So for initial plan, you just um, present your assignment one, because uh, I'm quite smart. Yeah? I design uh, assignment one, actually following the, the rubric of uh, initial plan of PhD. <laughs> so that means if you do very well in your initial plan in assignment one, you are ready for colloquium one, okay? So I'm helping you and helping your supervisors. So you, your supervisors should send me gifts because I help their students uh, get ready for colloquium one, yeah? And then inshallah, next semester, uh, okay? Next semester, uh, after you write chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, of course, you need to write chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three this semester, right? But you can still improve next semester, discuss with your supervisor, and we'll set a date for you to present at proposal defense, okay? Pro at proposal defense, uh, you present your chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. 
in 20 minutes. Okay. So let's uh, talk uh, in a uh, little bit detail on uh, the subtopic of the uh, research um, methodology chapter, which is chapter three. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I have question. Sure. Go ahead. About a uh, questioner. Uh, uh, how much we should uh, collect? Yeah, from uh, audience. Minim minimum. Minimum. Yeah. Very good questions. Uh, I will answer that later. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, when we talk about the. Um, the population, it depends on the population. It depends on the um, uh, sample criteria that you choose. There are many sampling criteria. So for now, let, let, let me quickly answer that question. Okay, for example, yeah. So before... Uh, you determine what is the sample size. So the question is what is the uh, accurate uh, sample size that we must choose? 300, 400, 500? First, it depends your, on your population. Okay, what is the population? Population is defined as a complete group of entities which share common characteristics. Zikman, 2013. So the, you need to specify the population of the studies. Who are your population? So remember, population is a complete group of entities which share common characteristics. So for example, in this study, the population is, for example, all Muslims, public school, public secondary school teachers who are eligible to pay income zakat in the state of Qadam. Okay, That is an example. So you must be very clear about who are, who uh, constitutes the um, population of your study. So this one is all Muslims, public, secondary school teachers who are eligible to pay income zakat located in the state of Qatar. For example, yeah. So um, how do you determine the number of populations? In this case, um, I collected the data from the uh, from each school. Yeah, no, sorry, I collected the data from the um, uh, district. Um, I'm I'm trying to translate into English. Yeah? Uh, um, pusat Pendidikan Daerah, yeah, District Education Center. In the state of Kedah, there are a district we call District Education Center. So the uh, Education Center uh, will give us the number of teachers, right? The number of teachers. How many schools? in the state of Qadar? And how many Muslim teachers in the state of Qadar? Okay. How many of them have a grade of 41 or higher? So those students, uh, those, those teachers having a grade of 41 or higher are eligible to pay zakat. So we need to find the data. So based on the data given by the district education center, uh, this study found that there were 
13,089 Muslim secondary school teachers who work under federal government located in the state of Canada. This number is very important. Yeah? You need to get this number. So when you want to collect the data, number one, you need to determine uh, the number of population. Yeah, the number of population. So, so once you get this one, then the next question is, how are you going to determine the sample size, right? There are many ways, there are many ways. And the most popular is Krishi and Morgan, yeah? Krishi and Morgan. So I read uh, Krishi and Morgan. Uh, there, there was an article by Krishi and Morgan, 1970. I just copy paste the, uh, the, the formula. S is the sample size. This one is square squared. N, N is population size. Uh, P is population proportion. Uh, D is degree of uh, accuracy. N is again population size. You plug in the numbers, then you get sample size. But it gives you a headache. It gives you a headache with this. So, don't worry. Tening. This is easy. So for example, uh, N is the uh, N is the population. N is the population, right? And S is the sample size. So if you can determine your population, for example, this study's population is 13,000, right? 13,000 is between 10,000 and 15,000, right? So your sample size should be between 370 to 375. So this study chose 372, yeah? Because the population is 13,000, it's between 10,000 and 15,000. So the sample size should be between these numbers. You can choose 372, 373, or you can choose 375. The more, the better. So I said, based on the table of Krishi and Morgan, if the population size is 13,089, which lasts between 10,000 and 15,000, right? Then the sample size N should be between 370 to 375, right? So the sample size is 372. Why 372? Just, just a number between these two. I could choose 373, 374 is still all right. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Eh? Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, any question, please? Yeah. Uh, how about uh, data series for such as uh, macroeconomic, uh, inflation, and other? Uh, how many data uh, you have to get uh, if, uh, if this uh, series data? The, uh, the audio is not very clear. Can, can you repeat? Sorry, sorry. Tes, hello? Yes, that's better. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, how about uh, series data, Prof? Uh, such Time as, series data. Time series data. Yeah. 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 Uh, such as impression, uh, macroeconomic, and others, you know. Uh, how many how many data uh, we have to get uh, to this uh, thesis? Now, statistically, as a rule of thumb, um, in statistics we say if the number 
of sample size tends to 30. If the, if the number of sample size tends to 30, menuju, eh, tends to menuju ke arah nombor 30. Yeah? Jika sample size itu menuju ke arah 30, then the distribution tends to be normal. Distribution itu dia menuju ke arah menjadi normal. Itu yang diajar dalam kelas statistics ya. As the sample size tends menuju to 30, 30, then the distribution tends to be normal. So based on that uh, what, rule of thumb, eh? based on that rule of thumb, we say in time series, the number should be larger than 30. The larger the better. So the number of observations should be larger than 30. The larger the better. So if the number of sample size in time series less than 30, uh, the uh, distribution tends towards non-normality. So because normality is one of the requirements, one of the, um, sorry, one of the assumptions, yeah, one of the assumptions that must be fulfilled. So meaning it is a requirement yeah that the data is normal one of the requirements is the data must be normal in order to go to the stage of analysis so there are many uh, requirements or uh, assumptions that must be fulfilled before we can analyze certain data in time series yeah, one of them is normality and then uh, linearity homoscedasticity, multicollinearity, and autocorrelation. So those are the five uh, assumptions that uh, must be, uh, uh, sorry, those are, um, those are some of the things that must be tested, yeah? There must be some, we call uh, diagnostic checking. We do the di diagnostic checking to make sure, number one, the data must be normal. Number two, there is there must exist the linear correlation. Okay. Number three, there must not be any uh, multicollinearity. So there must not be any multicollinearity. Number four, uh, it must be homoscedastic. The data must be homoscedastic. And number five, there is no autocorrelation. So those uh, we can we can discuss in more detail uh, in uh, in the future lectures. So those those are the statistical uh, concepts. Yeah, that that we need to understand if we do the uh, time series analysis. One common mistake uh, I found by undergraduate students and also by postgraduate students is they don't test for these five, uh, they don't check for these five, um, what say? Five assumptions that must be met. Yeah. Uh, so if you do not test these five things, yeah, we we need, we need to do the the diagnostic checking. If you don't do that, that means the analysis was done on the data that is not appropriate to be analyzed. Yeah. So to understand. It's something like this. You want to cook a fish, right? You want to cook a fish uh, or a chicken. You want to cook fish or chicken, right? So if you, 
For example, your wife wants to cook chicken, chicken curry, for example, right? So your wife needs to do what? Number one, uh, take off the, you know, take out any remaining hair, you know? Bulu ayam, eh? Mesti buang, eh? Kalau ikan, mesti buang uh, sisik, eh? Mesti buang dulu. Then, <coughs> um, and then, what else? Uh, take out the blood, yeah? Clean the blood. And then, cut it into pieces, right? And then maybe, I don't know, put some, put some spice, maybe. Then cook. Then you can eat healthy chicken curry. Good chicken curry or good fish curry. Imagine if your wife uh, take the buy, bought by the chicken from the market and then just go home and cook the chicken and make it like a curry without cleaning all those things. What happened? And you eat the chicken. So you will get sick and you will puke. Yeah, muntah, huh? So, so that is an example. So when we do the analysis, yeah, analysis is like cooking. Yeah, we have to make sure that the data that we analyze are the data that is appropriate or suitable to be analyzed. Okay, just an example. Yeah. So we'll talk more about. That later. Okay. So, any other question? I'm wrong. Uh, did you uh, use about the instrument trial? Uh, if in Indonesia, especially in uh, social uh, science, there are must be before the questionnaire sent to respondent. There are must be to trial. True. Uh, yes. Trial about uh, ten until uh, thirty respondent. True. Are, uh, in your thesis, uh, is use it? Yes. Yes. Good question. So. Um... First, first we need to construct theoretical framework like this. If, if you decide to use a questionnaire as instruments to collect the data, right? So you must have uh, the theoretical framework. This is an example. So in your theoretical framework, you have variables these are all the boxes are all the variables and uh, when we analyze in statistics we call it constructs in statistics we call it constructs because uh, construct means something that is abstract in nature but can be measured uh, in MP in empirical studies okay so constructs are the things that are abstract in nature, abstract means we cannot see, but can be measured empirically. All right. So the question is, okay, this one is the most difficult part to me. Yeah. And for testing the validity and reliability of the instruments, uh, it's not that difficult. The difficult part is to determine what are the variables to be included in the theoretical framework, right? That's to me is the most difficult part because you cannot simply throw in variables, you know? Uh, some of my PhD students, they draw this framework uh, and they ask me questions, Prof, 
Is my framework okay? Okay. So uh, my answer is this. Your framework, number one, must be as comprehensive as possible, meaning that you include the most significant variables. Yeah? And how many? As comprehensive as possible. Number one. Number two, you need to justify why you include each of the variables in the framework. If you can do these two things, your framework is okay. Yeah. So, and then the student said, Prof, tell me, you don't answer my question. <laughs> tell me, is it okay or not? And I said, okay, let me ask you this question, all right? Why you put, number one, is it comprehensive or not? Okay. And then the student said, I don't know, Prof. I don't know. Okay. I said, okay, how, how did you decide to put this variable? Okay, I combine TPB with TAM with uh, DIT. These three models, I just combine, I just put it there. No, please don't do that. It's not like decorating a tree, you know? You just put whatever you like. It's not like that. Please don't do that. I said, okay. The way to do is you read the literature, you know? You look at uh, the latest uh, literature, the, liter the latest uh, research, or the latest uh, PhD thesis, or the latest articles, okay? For example, this framework use the theory of planned behavior, right? So you look at the latest research on the theory of planned behavior. What are the most uh, recent articles? And then, uh, you think you need to justify logically. For example, in this case, this is to test compliance behavior of zakat, right? So you need to justify, uh, in the case of zakat, why attitude is important. In the case of zakat, why subjective norm is important, is significant, yeah? In the case of zakat, why perceived behavioral control is significant. In the case of zakat, why moral application is significant? So all of this you need to justify. There are two ways to justify. One is you mentioned that it is significant and it was the significance was proven by previous studies. Okay, let me repeat. Number one, to justify the inclusion of each variable, for example, attitude, you need to mention that this uh, variable attitude was proven to be significant by other previous researchers. That's number one. Number two, you need to justify in the context of your research. For example, in the context of zakat, attitude is significant because if someone has a positive attitude, yeah, then he or she is more likely to pay zakat. So that's how you justify. You cannot just throw in. If you throw in, it takes you two, three minutes. It's get done. This one, it takes three, four months to think through. Yeah. Uh, so this was done before the proposal defense. You need to read um, the latest articles, yeah? Right, so suppose you are done with this. You can justify. Then the next difficult question is, how do we measure? How do we measure, right? Well, you again, you need to look at how previous researchers measure this variable. How previous researchers measure attitude, right? How they measure subjective norms. 
these are all abstract things. But if you are lucky, if you can find, okay, so make dua, make lots of salat, uh, may Allah guide you to find previous researchers who have measured this thing, right? And then who will give you the questionnaire instruments. If you read articles, most of the articles don't give you the questionnaire items. They don't give you. Suppose they don't give you, what do you do? You have to email them. You have to contact them. If they are in research gate, you can ask them questions. Uh, Prof, uh, your research is interesting and I'm interested in testing, um, in doing research using the questionnaire items, right? Could you please share your questionnaire items? So that's what I did. That's what I did. Okay. I contacted those uh, researchers who have previously measured these uh, constructs, right? So fortunately, so uh, Eisen, this guy, Eisen, he published his questionnaire items, right? And the rest, they do not publish. And I went to see uh, this person, right? And asked for the questionnaire. Alhamdulillah, he gave me. And then he also gave me the number of this person and the number of this person. So I contacted them and I asked for the questionnaire items. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah help me. So, I adopted, right? I adopted their questionnaire items. From their questionnaire items, I made the items. I adapt, ad, adapted and adopted these questionnaires of, these questionnaire items to measure attitude, right? So, this is not done by me. I just, adapted and adopted from previous researchers, right? Then after that, three things I needed to do, right? Number one is to test for face validity. Number two is to test for content validity, right? Face validity, I sent, I sent back to this, the same person, Zainal, yeah? I met uh, Prof Zainal, yeah? I said I adopted and adapted these questionnaires from previous uh, researchers, including yourself. Could you please uh, check whether uh, these questionnaire items are valid or not, right? So he checked and I passed. He said, all the items are valid in the sense that it measures what it is supposed to measure. These items measure what attitude is supposed to measure. So <coughs> that's number one. Face validity. The content validity, uh, I asked some of my friends, some of my, the lecturers, right? And then ask them to read and whether they understand or not, whether it is confusing or not, whether the languages are okay or not. So after taking into account their comments, some of them, some of the questions I need to modify. Eh? They ask, they, they make certain comments. How many? It doesn't matter. Two or three is all right. Yeah, one for face validity, 
two or three, four. So it can be anybody. Just read this one and make sure that the questions are clear and not confusing. So face validity and content validity. And then you need to do pilot test. Yeah? You need to do pilot test. So after that, after face validity and content validity, you, you send to anybody. You can send to your students, anybody. Between the number of 12 to 100, according to one authority, uh, the size of pilot test should be between 12 to 100. So in this case, I chose 100, the maximum. So you can choose any numbers. So some people choose 30, some people choose 40, 60, any numbers. So I chose 100. I was very ambitious. Eh? So I sent out, because I have many students. <laughs> so I gave, I sent out uh, about 130, right? I met my students, asked them to answer this question. So I chose 100 of them, right? Just 100 of them. And then uh, input into SPSS, yeah? input into SPSS, and uh, use SPSS to check for the uh, Chromebook Alpha. Can be done very quickly. Pilot test can be done very quickly. Two, three days. Yeah? Two days for collection, one day to analyze. To analyze, not one day, just one hour. Uh, to input the data, maybe two hours to input the data. Yeah? To analyze, uh, if you are an expert, five minutes, you can get Chromba Alpha. After you input the data, five minutes. You give to me, inshallah, five minutes or less. You can ask me, Prof, can you analyze Chromba Alpha? My question is, did you input correctly into SPSS? If you say yes, okay, five, give me five minutes. Okay. So pilot study, it's not that difficult. Yeah. The, the process is quite straightforward. Just input the data and uh, analyze the combat alpha. So if you don't know how to input the data, uh, then it becomes problem problematic. There was one PhD student who came to me, he said, can you analyze uh, Chromba Alpha? Can you do, can you give me the Chromba Alpha statistics? I collected the data of uh, 40 students. I said, sure, where is your data? <laughs> and then he gave me the data in Excel. He did not input the data correctly. And it cannot be analyzed. I said, no. I said, please, mister, you did not input your data correctly. You did not name your variables. You did not input your data correctly. It cannot be analyzed. He said, prof, can you input the data for me? Masha Allah. It's your job, it's not my job. They said, I don't know how to analyze. I don't know how to input the data. Okay, um, have you tried Excel? Input the data into Excel, it's all right. I don't know Excel. Then input the data into SPSS. I don't know SPSS, MashaAllah. You don't know any. So I said, okay, let's work together. So he read the data and I input the data for him. Yeah, about uh, 40, 42, I think. So it took us more than three hours with two persons. Yeah. Um, all right. So in, inputting the data takes time. Yeah. You have to input the data for each of the respondents. Okay. 
in inputting the data, there are two steps. Yeah? One is uh, specifying the variables. Two is uh, key in the data. Yeah. So the analysis part is easy, five minutes. I told him, I promise you to analyze, not to input the data. Now you took more than three hours of my time. He said, okay, I'll buy you a lunch. He said, all right, no. And then when we went to have a lunch, I paid for his lunch because he didn't have enough money. I said, okay, it's all right. So I said, you cannot find any other supervisor like me. I help you to input the data and the last data for pilot study. And I pay for your lunch. So <laughs> he said, okay, Jazakumullah. Said, okay. So that that is a story. I like I like to help people, but please don't take advantage of me. I said. Next next time you need your know, in the real data collection, please input the data yourself. Yeah. For example. Now you have 42, I told him. In the data collection, you might have more than 380. Don't come for my help to input your data. It will take, you know, a long time. So learn yourself, you know. Learn from your friends or you go to any workshop. I said, no supervisor in the world will input the data for the students. I'm the only one. And I pay for your lunch. <laughs> uh, that's a good story. Yeah? So I, I like helping people. So I was just uh, teasing him. Yeah, I like to tease. Yeah, all right. So uh, can we, I want to perform in short. Okay. So we take a break. Uh, can you give me 15 minutes? Okay. We'll meet uh, what time? Now is uh, 9.35. We'll meet 9.50, yeah? Inshallah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Cerita tadi Prof Yusuf luar biasa, supervisor yang paling. <laughs> iya, padahal bisa belajar di YouTube ya. <laughs> Ari, ini Pak Soleh belum masuk ya? Hah? Pak siapa Rahman Soleh ya? Bukannya ada, tadi kayaknya masuk cuma keluar lagi kayaknya. Oh gitu. Hmm. Soalnya kan dia syariah ya. Oh, iya. nah, dia nanya tuh tadi iya, apa iya. sama atau gimana? Soalnya juga kemarin dia udah udah ngirim nisel uh, proposalnya. Oh, oke okay, besok tanya deh. Oke okay, oke. Okay. Nah, semua kan ya, Pak Fauzi, Pak Dindin, Pak Adi udah oke okay semua ya. Pak udah Pak? Udah udah. Udah. Tinggal, Jadi, tinggal menunggu ini keputusan, tapi teman-teman yang angkatan di atas kita, ada sebagian yang sudah menerima file, atau yang perpanjangan itu? Kayaknya mereka yang yang file ya, tapi agak lama berarti ya, sudah hampir 6 bulan ya. Itulah kan, kemarin kan minimal 30 hari. Iya, <laughs> iya. Mereka COVID kali ya? Bisa jadi. Tapi mereka mengajak bulan bulan Desember ya untuk oh. ke Malaysia. Saya bilang kalau misalkan digabung kalau kita udah keluar misalkan Januari Februari begitu supaya lebih banyak jamaahnya begitu. <laughs> kalau lebih banyak jamaahnya nanti susah nyari itu tempat tinggal. Iya juga ya kalau misalkan kita berlima barangkali bisa dititipkan gitu. <laughs> iya. Katanya Prof mau nyariin rumah. Ya, itu. Kalau kebanyakan kan susah, kan? Iya. 
saya agak kepikir dari KL ke Kedahnya itu naik apa ya? Biasanya naik bus. Oh, bisa naik bus. Kan dua jam ya di sana. Oh iya dijemput ya ya betul. Ya, dijemput. KL ke Kedah berapa lama? Emang mau kapan? Hah? Masih lama kan? Maksudnya kalau naik pesak naik itu Okay. Tapi masih lama kan? Selama. Ya Januari, Februari mungkin. Wah, serius nih? <laughs> andai, ya. andai, di, andai sudah dibuka, jadi kebijakan misalkan 30 Desember sudah dibuka untuk bisa apa? Stempel untuk imigrasi misalkan gitu. Mm-hmm. Waduh. Atur aja waktunya. Bareng-bareng aja atur. Ada penerbangan yang langsung ya Pak? Harus dua minggu kan ya di sananya? Dua minggu, iya. Hatuh. Sampai keputusan kesehatan tidak ada masalah, sampai mendapatkan stempel, ah, ada dua Tuhan tuh di situ. <laughs> Ini kalau naik bus KL ke Kedah, 4 jam. Oh, capek. 4 jam ya. Ya mungkin ada pesawat kali ya. Kalau pesawat, kalau pesawat ke Kedah ada gak ya? Ada langsung. Dalam berapa itu kisaran berapa itu Pak, Pak Dokter ini harus banyak-banyak nabung ini sepakat lima ratus ribu lima ratus ribu beneran pakai pakai solar <laughs> di goes kali itu flight Jakarta Kedah By the way, uh, Bang Tevo, hmm. itu penelitian yang ini mirip-mirip sama aku ya? Nah, bagus kan? Ya, ini, <laughs> jangan sampai gue di London. <laughs> Berarti ya. satu paket ini langsung langsung Prof Yusuf yang mengambil alih ini. <laughs> eh bukan ini ya? Bukan apa? Uh, uh, tadi belum dibagiin supervisornya? Belum Rabu. Di, di pending hari Rabu. Rabu minggu depan, oke. Okay. Ya, tiga hari lagi katanya. Sip, sip, sip. Karena, karena kan tadi terlambat ada tamu tadi, jadi nggak bisa menjadi. Ini Kurang mau tanya deh. Mahal lah ininya, uh, apa tiketnya? Soalnya. Iya. Empat juta ke Jepang aja yuk. Nah, iya benar. <laughs> kita bilang aja sama Prof. Prof. Kita bilang di Jepang aja gitu. Giliran gara profnya baru gue unmute. Begitu prof datang langsung mute lagi. Tapi untuk stempelnya itu kan tetap di, di KL ya, bukan di kedahnya. Kalau di kedahnya kan kita hanya untuk apa? Untuk tes kesehatan ya. Betul betul. Berarti naik pesawat ya, eh, naik apa? Naik mobil ya. Saya juga lagi kontak-kontak sahabat kita di sana, barangkali ada pimpinan apa persyarikatan, barangkali yang punya apa punya rumah nganggur di Kedah begitu. Oh, ntar kita disuruh kuliah ke Universitas itu Muhammadiyah Malaysia. Malaysia. <laughs> Potongan lima puluh persen masih tinggi ya Pak, Pak Dokter? Oh, ada kan? Hah? Ada potongan nih Iya, jadi itu berdasarkan usulan dari program studi eh, apa, PTM kepada Majelis Dikti, nanti SKPP, SKPP nanti rekom ke rektor sana. Itu jadi potongan lima puluh persen. Kalau misalkan dikalkulasi masih masih tinggi sih. Iya ya. Gak apa-apa ntar kita aja ngajar di sana. Saya saya kurang siap. Terlalu banyak godaan Pak Dokter. <laughs> di KL kan ya, UMM ya? Iya, di KL. Pak Indra tuh yang di KL lama tuh, mungkin punya itu kali driving Kon- light. Kontrakan banyak banyak kontrakan Pak Indra sana. <laughs> Uh. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, let's uh, continue with uh, research method. I think the better word is research method. Research methods chapter. So after introducing this chapter, we should write about research design. What is a research design? A research design is a plan structure is a plan so we must plan um, and it's a plan structure and strategy of the investigation the investigation means the research or in your case the the, the thesis yeah a research design consists of a plan structure and strategy of the research so conceived so research design is constructed developed to obtain answers to research questions or problems so research design must be linked with the research questions uh, research problems and also research objectives so what is a plan plan is a complete scheme or program of the research so what does it mean a complete scheme of the research it means we must <coughs> mention about what we will do from writing the hypothesis okay we need to uh, form the hypothesis and their operational implications to the final analysis of data so that means we need to uh, develop the theoretical framework from that we will develop the thesis oh sorry we will de develop the hypothesis first we have must construct the uh, conceptual framework right or the theoretical framework and then the uh, we must write the hypothesis right and then uh, we must specify how the operational implication means how we are going to measure how we are going to measure all the constructs yeah and then we need to collect the data and then we need to finally analyze the data so those are the steps yeah? so <clears throat> For quantitative method using questionnaire, okay, uh, we mentioned that this study used a questionnaire uh, to answer research questions and research objectives. So this is basically what research design is. So the first step in uh, in uh, research design is to develop the theoretical framework okay so in order to develop theoretical framework right like i said before this is not a difficult this is not an easy step rather it's quite time consuming and it's worth mentioning it worth it is worth taking time yeah? to include all the variables so in order to construct this framework we need to look at what others have done yeah so <clears throat> um, we say this section discusses the theoretical framework of the study what is the theoretical framework of the study that is the relationships among the constructs 
we mentioned about what are the constructs, right? We have uh, attitude, subjective norms, perceived behavioral controls, moral obligation, intention, compliance behavior. And then there is uh, Islamic uh, religiosity. Yeah, Islamic religiosity, which uh, acts as a moderator. Okay, so whatever that you include in the variable, in the theoretical framework here, you need to explain. Uh, so a theoretical framework is very much needed to understand what? For example, to understand the non-compliance behavior of zakat in general and non-compliance of income zakat specifically in the state of Qatar. And we need to mention the underpinning theory. What is underpinning theory? Underpinning theory is the theory that we base our theoretical framework on. So for example, in this case, the underpinning theory is the theory of planned behavior. <clears throat> so how do we choose the underpinning theory? Again, we look at what other researchers have done. So in the case of compliance and non-compliance behavior, Previous researchers have used the theory of planned behavior. So your supervisor and your examiner will be convinced, right? Because, because uh, this is what has been done. Yeah. So in the environment of uh, compliance behavior, okay, or non-compliance behavior, the under the suitable underpinning theory is TPP. So uh, we will discuss um, the suitable underpinning theory uh, for each uh, case, for each case. So we need to determine your topic, the variables that you might find uh, as a significant. Then uh, we can determine which, which uh, is uh, which model or which theory is suitable to be used as underpinning theory? All right. So this underpinning theory is based on Eisen 1991. So I just uh, copy and paste what, what Eisen says because this guy is the authority or the pioneer that introduced this theory. And also I discussed some of the previous research that have constructed theoretical frameworks of uh, zakat compliance. And these are the previous researchers. Okay. Then based on their studies, I developed this uh, theoretical framework. Okay. And then uh, we need to explain uh, why, why we include these variables, why attitude or why these variables or these constructs are included. So basically, like I said, there are two ways to mention or to justify uh, the inclusion of the constructs. One is to uh, mention uh, those previous uh, researchers that have used these constructs. Okay, for example, I, I explained attitude is the first construct yeah? included in this framework. Why? Because there were many other researchers this guy, this guy, and this guy all have shown that attitude uh, is significant to be tested. Yeah. So I use previous researches. 
Okay. And then uh, I said that this uh, attitude, there are many dimensions. Okay, there are these uh, dimensions. Okay, following the research by this guy. So we can, this study concludes that attitude uh, is uh, a significant <coughs> construct that influence the intention here. Intention is the middle. So attitude to intention. So we cannot simply put everything, you know, we just, every variable that we include, we must justify based on the previous studies and also based on the logical, uh, the logical uh, argument. Okay, so all of these are explained. Then the second is subjective norms. Okay, this one, I need, I need to explain why this is included, right? So this is included also based on the previous studies, such as this guy, so mentioned some of the previous studies that have used subjective norm. And um, so this study hypothesizes that subjective norms have a positive influence on intention. And there are five uh, groups uh, contained in the uh, subjective norms. Eh? And the third is perceived uh, behavioral control. So in other words, every variables, every construct that we include, we must justify based on the previous studies. That's all what we have to do. All right. Then, after you justify why you include the variables, right? Then you need to develop hypothesis. What is your hypothesis? In general, what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is what we expect to happen. So in research, we say hypothesis. In a layman term, it's just your expectation about <coughs> relationship between two variables. So in this case, we need to develop how, uh, how uh, have attitude influence the intention. Okay. If you have any question, okay. Uh, Bapa, yes, Prof. Uh, yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Uh, yes, Prof. If uh, our variable is uh, uh, cannot find or get uh, reference, what will we do? Whoa. Success uh, uh, your variable. Uh, success your variable. Uh, Islamic religiosity. That is uh, uh, maybe uh, we can get. Uh, uh, more reference, uh, what will we do? Uh, the, the most difficult thing is to get the questionnaire items, right? That is the questions. Suppose you include, yeah? Suppose you include this variable, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, suppose you, suppose in this case, you include yeah. Islamic religiosity, right? Yeah. And then, uh, there are no questionnaire items, yeah? Suppose you cannot find the questionnaire items. Then you are in and trouble. You are in trouble. You don't get your PhD. No, just joking. <laughs> so so you're, in, you're in trouble because uh, you don't get questionnaire items. So that is the question, right? Ah, we can get... Uh, we cannot get uh, a reference uh, about uh, Islamic religiosity. Uh, uh, success, uh, my uh, my paper, my initial proposal uh, is uh, I will I will 
modeling modeling uh, for Islamic social finance in uh, digital uh, that is uh, uh, is very little uh, reference maybe uh, apa ya uh, yeah uh, we can uh, we cannot uh, get reference uh, in in journal and others uh, what will we do uh, if we uh, create uh, the model for for that what what is the name of the variable uh, uh i will i will uh, maybe uh uh apa ya uh, uh zakat uh, we combine with uh, zakat we combine with uh, fintech that is uh, apa uh, uh, yeah, fintech and maybe maybe we can we can uh, i will i will see i will see uh, my uh, 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 my proposal uh, uh, that uh, is a uh, model for fintech uh um gimana ya uh what what you say uh mungkin i i will uh, maybe i will i will send you my model uh fintech uh, with zakat uh, soda, uh, sodako and and wakaf um, that's model uh, i create uh, and uh, i will I will ask uh, in expert uh, that is uh, uh, the grid model or not. Uh, that is uh, we can uh, can use that uh, 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 method. Prof. Yes, uh, one way. <clears throat> one way of uh, constructing a research method. Uh, like I mentioned before, is to find the underpinning theory, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about fintech, it doesn't matter <clears throat> whether fintech in the environment of zakat, fintech in the environment of wakaf, or in other contexts or other environment, yeah, takafu, banking. So fintech is used uh, in various areas, right? It can be used in banking, takaful, um, zakat, wakaf, Islamic crowdfunding, Islamic microfinance, and others. So actually, your topic is fintech. Your topic is fintech. So your when we talk about fintech. Usually, the underpinning theory is called U tau. What is U tau? Can can you see or not? Yeah, yeah I can see. U tau is the name for the unified technology acceptance and use of technology theory, it's called Utah. This should be the underpinning theory of your study. So my recommendation is you search for Utah, right? Search for Utah. Uh, you Google Utah, find articles on Utah, right? Utah comprises of four main factors. Okay, performance expectancy, social influence, effort expectancy, and facilitating conditions. So these are the four factors. So these are called the underpinning theory. Okay. Look at how you thought looks like. It's quite messy, yeah? Okay. How do I enlarge this one? You can read about Utah, yeah? and this is 
the model. Okay, you can for fintech, this is the suitable underpinning theory. Uh, look at this. Uh, it has four IV performance expectancy, and then we have effort expectancy, and then we have social influence, facilitating conditions, behavioral intentions, and use behavior. So use behavior is called the dependent variable, and then we have four independent variables. We have one a mediating variable and four moderating variables. So look at this, all right? And look at the research, uh, the recent uh, research on, uh, on, on UTAU, right? Now they have UTAU 2, the second version of UTAU. Look at this first. That's why I said it takes time. Eh? You cannot simply throw in variable that you like. If you do that later on, you'll be in trouble. Um, first look at UTAU and um, uh, the recent uh, research or recent article that has used UTAU, right? Look at the latest uh, uh, theoretical framework. Then you decide uh, what are the new variables that you want to introduce, right? Uh, some of, for example, performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence, facilitating conditions. If you apply, to zakat, if you apply to walk out, right? Social influence might not be significant. Yeah, so that is one way you can modify. You might want to delete social influence, for example, because uh, you need to look at uh, previous studies. Uh, I have read some, but and uh, I have uh, found that many studies indicates that social influence is not significant. Although there are some studies who find that it is significant. It's good, it's good if you find that some studies find it uh, significant, some studies find it not significant, then you decide. In the context of uh, what, what environment you want to choose, zakat or wakaw? You have to choose one. You cannot apply to zakat and wakaw. Otherwise, uh, it will take a very long time for you to finish your study. Choose only one, either zakat or wakaw or Islamic crowdfunding. Yeah, in, in, in Indonesia, Islamic crowdfunding is going to be a uh, uh, significant or essential instrument uh, in my opinion yeah uh, because it's uh, quite powerful to to uh, attract the funds yeah so it, it use uh, the latest uh, technology uh, the latest fintech uh, it use certain platforms so Islamic crowdfunding relies heavily on fintech. Yeah, it has the platform where uh, the donors can donate through the platform that they choose. The donors will get information about uh, how the money is spent, um, and the donors will get some rewards in certain cases all the small reward yeah so that's an example you need to choose uh, fintech in the case of what in what context or we, in research we say in what environment yeah then you might want to discuss with some people or you might want to read uh, 
articles, recent articles, and then you, you will decide which variables to keep, which variable to delete. Yeah, in your context, for example, in the context of Islamic crowdfunding, for example. So now, uh, which context are you interested in? I'm interested uh, uh, with Wakaf. With Wakaf, do you think Wakaf use? Uh, I, I, do you think Wakaf use uh, fintech heavily in Indonesia? Uh, I send uh, in group was. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, to 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 change uh, environment is alright. To change environment, it can be changed any time. But the most important is to find the right underpinning theory. Hmm. Then we go from there. What is, so, so for FinTech, the, this is the right underpinning theory. You look at Utah, this is the original Utah, and we have Utah 2 and other extensions. This is more complicated, yeah? yeah. This is uh, Utah 2. And they, they, they added hedonic motivation, price value, habit. Okay, then you decide uh, which one you want to use. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, every inclusion uh, of the variables or concepts must be justified. Yeah. Uh, that, that one takes time. Once you decide, it goes very fast. Yeah, once you decide, it goes very fast. You know, it's, it's like you choose to uh, get married, yeah, right? Suppose you want to get married and you have five girls that you can choose, five ladies, five beautiful ladies, uh, smart ladies to choose. What is the most difficult part? To choose the right one. <laughs> so you you need to make up your decision, yeah, and justify yourself why I choose this lady out of five, right? Uh, why why I choose, um, for example, walk off? Why not you choose Islamic crowdfunding? Why not you choose uh, zakat? Why not you choose Islamic banking, for example? Yeah, so that is quite difficult. Um, uh, so it's quite difficult, you know, for you to you have five beautiful ladies. Oh, it gives you headache. Yeah, which one I want to choose? You you need time to think. Once you decide, you cannot change your mind. You know. Suppose you want to marry girl number three, right? And then you say, oh, the wedding date is set. Then you get married. After that, you say, oh, I don't want to marry you. I want to find another girl. That is problematic. Yeah. So it's better you think through and make the right decision. And then you live with the lady hereafter. Okay, once you choose the lady, you cannot choose other lady. Yeah, you, so that you can live happily ever after. So choosing the right uh, theoretical framework is uh, is crucial in your study. So that's why I said it takes three or four months. It's all right. Uh, for now, you keep searching, yeah? You keep searching which one you want to choose. So I give you the direction. Eh? So you try to study you thought and try to download the recent articles that has done on you thought. Eh? So okay, thank you. Oh. How, how how do you choose the articles? You just uh, look at use behavior. Okay, you copy use behavior, and you copy to Google Scholar and see. Yeah. They will determine. They will. There will be many articles that has studied 
the influence of various uh, uh, variables on the use behavior. So use behavior represents uh, the usage of fintech, yeah? the usage of fintech in um, various uh, uh, environment. So in order to use fintech, you know, uh, uh, it has to be mediated by intention. Before you use fintech, you must have intention to use first, right? And intention is influenced by performance expectancy. Yeah, performance expectancy means you know, the person uh, is more likely to have the intention to use fintech if the fintech can give or can demonstrate certain performance. Yeah, what you get out of it. Yeah, what you get out of using it. Okay, so you need to study fintech if. Uh, you need to study U tau one and U tau two, and some other uh, recent studies. Yeah, so that's how you develop the uh, framework. Remember, after you get married, you live happily ever after. Don't change your wife. <laughs> Okay, any other question? Yes, Prof. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Yes, about okay. Indra. Yeah. Uh, mm, first of all, before I get further with my proposal thesis, um, actually, it's interested to read your thesis here. It's about the attitude versus or towards about the Zakat. Mm, my proposal thesis, as you hopefully you already be read, mm, is about causality relation between the stage of poverty with the willingness of giving donation. Uh, is there any similarity with your research, the cases that we studied now, or, or you do you have any suggestion for me to deep or to make more difference with your with our cases in this lecture, what do you think? Can you repeat the question? And I, I, I understood. I, I heard the statement, but the questions I missed. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Uh, hopefully, right now is more. Is it clear? Can you hear? Uh, is uh, intermittent. Some. Okay. Again. Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> Sorry, because it's my signal, I think. Uh, well, I got, um, I mean, I am afraid that my proposal is not, it, it, there is a similarity with my proposal with your, with our cases in this lecture. Is, is it my, my, is my proposal redundant with the lecture here or should I change my proposal or do you have any suggestion for me to make it more difference between the case that we are studying now with my proposal? What do you think? I, I can't remember. I, I read, uh, uh, scanned through all of the proposal, but I can't remember which one is, which one belongs to Bapa uh, in the oh, okay. Give me some time. Uh, I will try to see. Okay. My proposal is about the causality relation between the stage of poverty with the willingness of giving donation. Hubungan antara tingkat kesejahteraan dengan kemauan seseorang untuk memberikan donasi, baik itu zakat atau wakaf atau yang lainnya. Did you send to WhatsApp or to my email? Your, your email. Okay, let, let me check quickly. Papa Indra.
the question is, can I proceed with my proposal or not? <laughs> the proposal can be changed from time to time, but let me check. So, okay, hubungan kosalitas antara tingkat kesejahteraan dengan minat berwakaf. Okay. Okay, basically, uh, there is no mention of theoretical framework, right? Yeah, not yet. Hmm. So it looks like the topic is on uh, Minat Bawakaf, yeah? Yeah. And uh, right now you have only one variable. Type, one variable, yeah? One independent variable. So like I uh mentioned before uh what you need to do is find the right uh, underpinning theory yeah mm. so underpinning theory uh on minat bawakaf so my suggestion is to look at tpb right that's one of the underpinning theory um uh what else is minat perwakaf same with awareness bro? awareness kesadaran uh, it's not the same actually it's totally different yeah so minat um minat uh is closer to intention yeah intention yeah, yeah. intention uh the the more precise word is Melayu dipanggil niat ya, Indonesia dipanggil minat ya. Uh, intention, English is intention ya. So if you see, <coughs> when we talk about intention, there are several uh, underpinning theory that has used um, intention as the mediating variable, ya. So I, I showed before uh, the theory of planned behavior that use intention, yeah? And then also Utah also has intention. And, and then uh, there are other, uh, other underpinning theory also. So you might want to start looking for underpinning theory uh, your question is is it similar to my uh, to my thesis right well yeah. uh, it's all right my thesis is also similar to some of other theses uh, it has some uh, common variables other variable yang sama but more importantly what is or what are your variables that are different from others? Uh, that's that's is important. For example, you want to look at my theoretical framework. It's all right, but don't copy paste, right? You might for PhD, you might want to think about your contributions to the research. Right, so for PhD, you cannot copy paste anybody's framework, but you can take the framework, take my framework or take other people's framework. So look, try to find the recent articles on the intention to donate to work off, right? Or you can search for, um, the behavior to donate to work off. Okay. So you can Google or you can find in any e library. 
So that's your first job. Yeah. Because for PhD, we need to construct uh, variables that are as comprehensively as possible. And uh, later on, yeah, later on towards the end of the study, we need to prove, yeah, that your framework is comprehensive. How do you need to prove? Yeah, so statistically, you need to prove. And that one we can learn later. Eh? <laughs> After you collect the data, you analyze the data. Uh, then um, it will give you some statistics uh, that shows whether your framework is comprehensive or not. So one independent variable okay. is, is absolutely not comprehensive. Yeah. So your main job now is to find. Um, or to construct a yeah, theoretical framework that is as comprehensive as possible and as significant as possible. And inshallah, we will prove it statistically. That is our job. Yeah. First, we need to show that is that it is theoretically significant. Then later on, after collecting the data, analyzing the data, we need to prove that it is statistically significant. All right. Uh, if you are confused, don't don't worry. We will. Um, we are still early, yeah? so so you you need to differentiate between statistical significance and theoretical significance. Uh, theoretical significance is in chapter three. Right, like I showed before, you need to prove that every variable or every construct included in the theoretical framework is theoretically significant. You need to uh, review the literature and and explains that this is significant based on the research done by previous studies such as you know you need to mention the name of the authors of the previous studies then in chapter 4 after you pass proposal defense you need to prove that it is statistically significant inshallah if you uh, can construct yeah the uh, good Theoretical framework, inshallah, inshallah, you will get a good statistical result. So let yeah, we we need to make do on. <laughs> yeah. So keep okay. keep looking for the right underpinning theory. Okay, so I suggest theory of plan behavior, and also. Maybe just maybe um, what what is the environment that you want to choose? Uh, walk off, yeah, walk off, right? So yes, okay. uh, I, I would recommend I would suggest uh, you combine the theory of plant behavior with uh, diffusion innovation theory, right? So diffusion innovation theory. So let's so let's let's try to search diffusion innovation theory. <clears throat>
Yeah, this is another one of the um, diffusion of innovation theory. In uh, this, this theory was developed by Rogers, and uh, you need to study the diffusion innovation theory. Let's see. Okay, diffusion of innovation and it talks about the uh, adoption, yeah? the adoption of a new technology. And uh, you can justify that uh, Wakaf is a new innovation. Um, uh, walk off for example cash walk off eh, is like a new innovation yeah because in the classical um in the uh, classical approach uh, there at that time there was no cash walk off yeah but now in the contemporary um time there are Fukuha that that approves uh, cash walk off as another type of walk off. So, walk, cash walk off is part of an uh, innovation. So, I'm looking for the uh, framework. Yeah? It doesn't give any framework. Yeah, you you can look at you can look up. Uh, you can search yeah? deficient of innovation theory and also uh, the theory of planned behavior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the theory of planned behavior, yeah? So this is the theory of planned behavior. It has one variable called behavior or compliance behavior. And it has intention, right? It has intention, uh, niat, yeah? And then uh, attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control. So these are the underpinning theory that I use. And then, I would suggest you look for the diffusion of innovation theory uh, to make it different from the previous researchers. Yeah? You can try to be uh, creative. Yeah? Uh, Dr. Saifu may be able to help. Yeah? <laughs> so try to find uh, one and combine with another, uh, another theory. So you can combine with the, the diffusion of innovation theory, or you can combine with another theory called um, technology. Technology acceptance model. Yeah? So this is an example of uh, the technology acceptance model. 
Okay. So this is a model for the original technology acceptance model. Uh, it doesn't have um, intention, but it has actual system use. Okay. Uh, and then attitude is here, perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. So some people, they combine one or two underpinning theory and make or construct um, construct uh, the theoretical framework that uh, is different from others and that has uh, some significant contribution to the knowledge. So this is the original and it has some as, uh, extension. Eh? Look at this extension. Eh? If we look at, it has intention here, yeah? So you might want to combine uh, TPB and, uh, and TAM. This is called TAM, T-A-M, the theory of acceptance model. So it has uh, intention here. Or you might want to combine with DIT, eh? diffusion innovation theory. So that's how we can construct a um, comprehensive a theoretical framework of our own. So that is the first job as a PhD student, yeah? <laughs> try to <laughs> try to form your own theoretical framework. That is the key. Uh, for tonight, that is the lesson, yeah? <laughs> Remember, everybody need to come up with a comprehensive theoretical framework. Once you get that one, everything else will fall into places yeah uh, if you don't get your theoretical framework you will get you will get stuck then yeah, you will get stuck uh, after you get the theoretical framework uh, like uh, miss papa Fauzi mentioned what if you know what if there are variables that you cannot find the author. If you find the, my answer is, if you find the correct underpinning theory, that is impossible. <laughs> because <clears throat> we as researchers, right, we, uh, we do the research based on certain theoretical framework. If you choose TPB, you choose TAM, you choose DIT or you choose U tau. Uh, it's almost impossible to find any variable that has not been used by previous authors. You know, there are thousands and thousands of studies that have used all these underpinning theories. So take note, eh? you learn something new today. There are four underpinning, four popular underpinning theory. Number one, <clears throat> the theory of uh, planned behavior, right? Number two, you taught unified theory of, oh, I forgot, you taught, eh? U-T-A-U-T. Number three is DIT, diffusion of innovation theory. Number four is technology acceptance model, T-A-M. So you got four underpinning theories. And of course, there are many other underpinning theories, but in social science, these are among the uh, significant theories. Yeah? And there are other underpinning theories also, like the surf qual theory, uh, service quality yeah? theory. You can look up for surf qual, where it, uh, tries to measure the relationship between service quality and performance. Yeah? So there are many underpinning theories. So it's all right. We will uh, find one from time to time. So now mm, I give this job to you to find the 
the comprehensive underpinning theory of your own if you want to do the uh, if you choose to do the quantitative research so in quantitative research in my opinion once you get your underpinning theory you justify and then you get the instruments uh, the the questionnaire items the rest will fall into places the rest you just analyze and it's just uh, mechanical you know you, you you learn how to use statistical package uh, some of my students said oh prof it's difficult for me to study smart pls oh i'm too old to study all right uh, if you are not able then you can find you know some type of uh, assistant there are some students who knows about this and will help you to use smart pls for example but i think nobody is too old to learn anything uh, i'm an old person myself but i'm still uh, able to learn new things yeah, so don't uh, underestimate yourself. Allah gives us uh, great minds. Yeah, it's up to us to use or not. <laughs> that that's what I believe. Okay. So in case, uh, for example, you cannot find a perceived ease of use here. Yeah. Perceive is of use. Suppose you cannot, the common problem the, or the common limitation is you cannot find the question items. Yeah, suppose you cannot find the question items. What do I do? You need to find the researchers who have used this perceived is of use. Yeah, you email them, you contact them, you back them. You persuade them, you give them gift or anything and ask for the questionnaire items. That's what I did. Yeah. There are many ways to contact. If you registered for research gate, yeah, or what else? Link, uh, what do you call it? Linked app, yeah, or other platforms. Uh, yeah, and you and you find uh, that person, then you can contact. I was lucky because that researcher uh, lived about two hours from my house. So I called the person and uh, I went to his house. It took me two hours. So Alhamdulillah, the, if the researcher lived nearby you are very lucky if the researcher lives in the u.s or you are in trouble you cannot take a flight <laughs> to find the researcher so that that's the way you you try to get the question you attend sometimes you are lucky if you can get access to the research yeah sometimes the research is published somewhere sometimes the PhD thesis is published in the library uh, where the person passed PhD. Yeah. That's that's how we get uh, research or or the uh, uh, thesis. Yeah. Any other question before we? Oh, we are about to conclude. We have about five more minutes. I think everybody is sleepy. Uh, hmm. I'm not sleepy because I finished the whole cup of coffee. So I'm still awake. <laughs> so you can ask me questions. I'm still awake. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, bro. So the underpin uh, the underpinning theory is R one plan behavior to you tout three D I P for 
the AM TAM, and fifth is service quality theory. And my main task is finding the comprehensive theory of our own, of my own. It can be measured from the combining the existing underpinning theory to underpinning theories or others. Is it correct? Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. And and so, please do not make mistake like one of my students. He combined mm -hmm. various theories and just throw it to me. Prof, is it okay? <laughs> So you cannot just take this and take this and combine uh, like uh, putting up, you know, decorations in your house, you know, you, you want to put up the frame here, put up the frame there. It's not like that. Uh, you need to read uh, previous research, hopefully the latest research and look at how they, um, how they construct the theoretical framework. From there, you think whether you want to modify and how you want to modify. And for PhD level, you have to modify, meaning you cannot replicate, you know, uh, this person's framework and or this person's framework. You can take and use it, but still you need to modify, make it different. And the difference is your contribution. So like in my case, the difference that I introduced was the introduction of Islamic religiosity, the first time used in the context of the theory of planned behavior and also moral obligation. That is the contribution of my research. I introduced something new, two variables, and I also introduced uh, new methods of uh, analyzing using a smart PLS. Yeah? We try to analyze uh, and try to make it a little bit different from how other researchers have analyzed the data. In simple words, we need to be different from others. Although uh, the difference is not that much, yeah? Yeah, but somehow it must be different and the difference should be significant. Sometimes the examiner, during the final stage of your viva, this is a popular uh, questions by examiner. Number one, in your own words, explain why your thesis is very good. That is a popular question. So I give you the questions already. One of popular questions. Okay, the examiner will say, Bapa Indra, after your uh, presentation, after the question and answers. So we are tired already. We finish three hours and a half, three and a half hours. Now I have two more questions. Number one, in your own words, Bapa Indra, tell me why you think your thesis is good. Okay, that's number one. Number two, tell me, what is the most significant contribution of your study? Why your study is uh, significant? So those are the popular questions asked by examiners at the end of the viva session. So if you do your thesis properly, inshallah, you will be able to answer. Now you cannot answer yet because you haven't done your thesis, right? So after you're done, if they ask you, Papa Indra, why you think your thesis is so good? Now you cannot answer, right? But after you hmm. do it properly, uh, you will be able to explain a lot of things. <clears throat> like in my case, I was 
able to explain why my thesis was good and the examiner uh, had to stop okay mr yusuf okay you can stop so we we want them to stop us <laughs> all right if your thesis is good inshallah you will be able to answer okay so now think about uh constructing um strong and justified theoretical framework yeah and then we go from there how we collect data how to determine population how to choose the sampling method how to choose the sample size and then how to distribute the questionnaire and analyze input the data and then analyze the data so hopefully tonight you get a picture <laughs> about the process of writing your thesis uh, so you can ask uh dr saiful also yeah of course <laughs> yeah because he's an expert <laughs> hmm. okay last question before we end uh, tonight's class Uh, last, uh, I'm Prof. How uh, the examiner uh, asked well to us the positive contribution. Yes, yes. That's, uh, that's another word. Yeah. And then, but in hypothesis, is negatively. It's all right. As okay. long as you can justify. Mm -hmm. As long as you can justify. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. But uh, I will say that if uh, the hypothesis is supported, it's much easier to justify. If the hypothesis is not supported by the data, uh, you need to justify by looking at previous researchers that uh, reveal or that provide evidence that uh, the relationship is not significant or the relationship is negative, then you are safe. Yeah? If, for example, all previous researchers have supported uh, that there is a significant relationship, and the um, relationship is positive, while in your case is negative, and no other researchers have found that it is negative, then uh, you will lose sleep. You cannot sleep. <laughs> you will have headache to justify. Uh, that's that's the problem. I'll tell you a story. There was one uh, PhD candidate, right? So one of the hypotheses was not supported. And after the viva, uh, he, the uh, examiner asked him to justify why the hypothesis was not supported or why the hypothesis did not receive empirical evidence and he couldn't answer right and then uh, he need to justify based on previous studies then uh, he said uh, um, there goes my studies yeah he couldn't he couldn't get phd in his opinion so he said he uh, prayed a lot to God, yeah, he was not a Muslim, yeah, he made lots of prayers to his God, he said, and then um, uh, eventually he found one or two studies 
that has uh, provided evidence or data that does not support hypothesis. So he passed his PhD. He is now a professor at one of the universities in Malaysia. So meaning, if you know, your hypothesis is not difficult, is not supported, uh, you will have very difficult time to defend. Uh, that is one of the challenges, yeah? So if most of the hypotheses are supported, you will have easier time. You can sleep like normal people at night. <laughs> Otherwise you will lose lots of nights. Yeah? All the people are sleeping, you are still awake. Oh, how am I going to justify? I'm in trouble now, why? The result is like this. You know, that happens to PhD students. So let's make dua that, you know, the results are, we get the good results, yeah? Okay, uh, I think, um, so that's all the class for tonight. And I hope uh, we learned uh, something tonight. Uh, Inshallah, uh, we will, go from here so uh, i will uh, continue uh, to help you inshallah make dua for me to uh, may allah give me strength uh, may allah give us uh, strength uh, and hidayah in the pursuit of knowledge so we need to uh, what they say to muhasaba. Huh? Uh, sometimes I remind our students that when we are doing masters or PhD, the intention is for the sake of Allah. Yeah, Lillahi Taala. May Allah give us rewards because the because in Islam, uh, you know, there is a great reward for pursuing of. Um, knowledge yeah in one hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if someone um uh, jika seseorang melalui satu jalan untuk menuntut ilmu maka allah akan jadikan jalan satu baginya satu jalan uh, di syurga jadi menuntut ilmu itu rewardnya sangat tinggi jadi kita ikhlaskan diri kita, insyaAllah. Kita dapat pahala, kita dapat kejayaan. Ha, dunia dan akhirat, insyaAllah. Ya. Okey, uh, jadi itu saja kelas untuk malam ni. InsyaAllah kita sambung lagi. Uh, nanti kalau perlu, boleh bagi tahu uh, individually. Kalau perlu untuk Zoom dengan saya, boleh WhatsApp lah. Kita boleh Zoom uh, pada masa tertentu. Di waktu malam lah, semua supaya everybody is free ya. Insyaallah okey uh, that's all terima kasih semua. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih semua ya. Terima kasih semua ya.